Hi, in the last video we cover in depth on polynomial regression. Uh, in this video we're going to move into dealing with nonlinear re relationships but uh, using um, ensemble method. Um, so let me just walk through uh, this example here. Uh, we are importing the so-called uh, standard libraries that we need. We need NumPy, Matplotlib, Seaborn as well as Pandas and also Plot, Matplotlib, uh, basically Plot Inline. So we're importing the Boston data set directly this time around from scikit-learn and we store that in the data frame itself. We're just basically storing the feature names as our um, as our column as our column heading. Okay, so basically these are the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 uh, independent variables that we've seen before. As for the target variable, we're storing it into Y itself. Um, rather than importing directly from the actual data that we downloaded, we're just going to import, make use of the psychic learn uh, data sets this time around. So this is, these are really a very brief introduction to some of the tools here, tool sets that we will go into depth a little bit more. We're going to cover decision tree and uh, a little bit of random forest, a little bit of Adaboost, boost. Um, and then we will actually uh, come back to them in future lessons. Uh, I just want some continuity here so that you can see that uh, we've been building and working on the Boston housing data set, looking at correlation analysis, simple linear regression, and then built upon it using a robust regression and then evaluate our model performance. And then after that, we built on top of that using multiple linear regression, uh, having moved away from uh, simple one factor regression, linear regression, we moved to multiple linear regressions and finally, finally, we look at regularization as well as polynomial. We're moving into the space of nonlinear features now. So we're going to look at decision tree. And uh, this is the, the steps. I just want to first introduce it to you now. And then we will actually revisit that a little later. Um, so we're going to import from scikit-learn from the tree, uh, the d decision tree regressor. Uh, we're just going to look at one variable this time around uh, rather than all of the so-called dependent sorry independent uh, factor or the um, uh, predictor so we're just going to use lstat uh, from previously we know we looked at this and we know that it is actually not linear as for the tree we do need to set a hyperparameter uh, of maximum depth now this is a number that we don't know so we're going to just try a number five um, just to actually you know start with that and then work from there. All right, so having set the hyperparameter, we fit our model using um, uh, mean square error and um, maximum depth of five. And um, here we're just gonna just sort the ID so that the, the so-called X is actually flattened. Um, we want to sort that out because otherwise our scatter plot and also our line plot is going to be all over the place. So this is just really for plotting purpose. So this is the figure setting the actual fixed size to 10 by 8 and scatter diagram. And also we're plotting the so-called um, decision tree on top of that just to see what it looks like. The color we set it to black and we label the x-axis is our LSTAT and the y label is our median housing value. So having a look at this, notice that LSTAT is on this side, MATV is on that side. You can see that maybe, well, we definitely have overfitted the, this up and down splash here basically tells us that um, our model is overfitted to the data itself. So we do need to tune our hyperparameter, reduce the um, maximum depth uh, that's one of the uh, challenges that you have with uh, decision tree is that you don't number one you don't know how many tree to you know uh, know to actually set how what is the maximum depth to set so you kind of have to do a trial and error like this so we're going to try uh, and reduce it down to two and uh, repeat the same process again uh, this time round it looks better uh, than before um, we, you can later on uh, as an exercise try maybe one or maybe three or maybe four and uh, that's really an iterative process just to see how it works out one of the challenge of using um, decision tree it really is that you kind of have to reiterate or iterate through this process to figure out what works best 
So instead of doing that, um, we can make use of an ensemble method called random forest, uh, where it would actually tune for you. And instead of doing one variable as we did before, which is using LSTAT, we're gonna we can actually we're just gonna fit everything in, and let the random forest actually figure that out for us. Um, the slight variation is that we're gonna use a, a matrix selection of train test split splitting our data to training set as well as the uh, test set, and we're gonna import mean square error and R square as our uh, performance evaluation. The X is really our all of our independent variable. And uh, this is the splitting. We're splitting our test, giving 30% to our test size and using 70% to build our model. So this is uh, the next line is really importing our random forest regressor and instantiating it. Uh, the criterion we're using is mean square error and fit our forest and we're going to run the actual prediction using the training data and again run the prediction on our test data except that these are data that we have not seen before the test which is the x test we didn't use for uh, in our fitting or our training of our uh, model itself so let's look at the performance of the model now the mean square error uh, for both in in sample and out of sample in sample meaning during the training period out of sample meaning during the test period itself okay so the mean square error is smaller during the training period in sample under the test it's actually worse this is what you know this is to be expected it's quite often like this and have a look at the r square yes it's the same 97.87 and 87.39 Again, like I mentioned before, this is really a brief introduction so that you can actually start to be familiar with Random Forest uh, Ensemble method. Another Ensemble method that I just want to introduce you to this time around is the Edibus. Again, Edibus is actually an Ensemble method as well. Uh, again, we're just going to instantiate it, fit the data, um, and we're going to train in sample sorry, predict in sample and run the prediction out of sample and basically have a look at our mean square error. Okay, notice that the mean square error of variables is slightly worse, uh, both in sample and out of sample. And having a look at the R square itself, again, in sample is better than uh, out of sample. So 94, so edibles did not perform as well as uh, the random forest. Um, there may be a few uh, hyperparameters that we need to actually tune. All right, so might have to increase our estimators. Uh, there's also other hyperparameters that you can actually vary maximum depth, um, other things such as OOB. So this is really just a brief introduction of this. We're going to go into explaining the actual intuition of the model under what circumstances does it work best. Uh, so we're going to go into that a little bit more in the future video. With that, I'm going to stop this video now. Just as an exercise for you, I'd like you to try out what we mentioned before, changing the actual max depth. We've tried five, we've tried two. Um, I'd like you to pause the video, try one, three and four, and see what it looks like, see if it actually improved. Um, although we don't actually have any performance evaluation matrix that's calculated, if you want to, you can actually try that out as well. With that, please pause the video. Um, when you come back, I'm going to summarize the lesson. I hope you found that exercise useful just to actually get an initial intuitive understanding of the decision tree. In this video, we've covered decision tree, we've covered random forest, and we've also covered edibles. Although we haven't gone into details on each and every one of these ensemble, they are in a separate section that we're going to go into depth in explaining how the model works, how is it built, and the actual intuition behind it. Uh, I just want to give you in this portion of the lecture under regression just as a taster for you to actually appreciate that there are other methods out there apart from linear regression, uh, polynomial as well as robust uh, regression to actually model your data. You can use these ensemble method. 
okay so with that i'm gonna stop this video in the next lesson we're gonna look at how to select uh, features uh, that is important okay so that's really the feature importance although we actually have covered this in the past uh, under a separate section using correlation analysis as well as, well as feature selection uh, in the next video although it's a short one i'm just going to cover uh, some features that edibles provide as well as random forest provide that provides that helps you to actually select uh, important features so i'll see you in the next video